Hey guys, Mike here. So in today's video, I'm gonna focus on the US EV market and we're gonna talk about a big competitor that's about to make a big push into this market to try to pick up quite a large market share of our EV market here. And why is a good chance they're gonna be able to do that? And basically kind of tell you, if you don't know what makes this market in America, the EV market that is, so different than Europe, which is number two, and China, which is number one, of course. And so I think you'll definitely get something out of this for sure. Uh, if you do, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe button for me, guys. I really appreciate that. And if you want to go ahead and open, up an account with BlockFi, it's an affiliate link I have down in the bottom right there, and I have my account with them. And you can go ahead and draw interest rates around 6% on your Bitcoin, around 5.25% on your Ethereum, and around 8.6% on your stable coin. And you can also get up to 250 fifty dollars of free bitcoin when you make your initial deposit depending on how much you deposit here as you see by the tiers right here or you can take out loans on your crypto or even apply for the very popular credit card which i think i'm a number hundred like seventy two thousand on the waiting list right now and that kind of lets you know how popular uh, that credit card will be and so without further ado let's go ahead and get into this competitor that's going to make a big push in the u.s ev market and so this came out last month that Volkswagen has started delivering their ID4, which is their main electric vehicle, uh, in the U.S. already. They'll start rolling them out to Europe and China as well. And the reason why it's important is because they have over 600 dealerships across the country. And as you see those 600 dealerships, this is broken down by state right here. So you can see they have 49 in Florida, out in California, which is the EV capital of America. They have a whole boatload, what is that, like 62 or something like that. And so you look across here, they got pretty much every state covered with multiple dealerships. And so this will give them a lot of exposure with this car, unlike other EV companies uh, have right now. And so why am I pointing this out and why does it matter? Why is it a big deal if they have all these dealerships? Well, it's simple. In America right here, this is the most unique EV industry there is because here you have franchise laws and other laws put in place by each individual state which protects dealerships and things like that. So this is where Volkswagen has the advantage because they get to roll in here and use all those dealerships to obviously get exposure for their cars, get people to see them and test drive them and all that fun stuff. While the other EV companies like Tesla have spent years hiring lobbyists to try to get these laws revoked or different legislation passed or lawsuits or whatever they had to do as you can see right here. As you can see here where you, know, you just type in Tesla spends millions on lobbyists and you can just scroll down and see 2015, 2017, 2016, all the way back to 2013 where they started hiring lobbyists to go into states and at the federal level to try to actually make it legal to direct to sell to consumers. And then recently last month, what was announced was EV rivals, Tesla, Rivian, Unite to Target direct sale legislation. So now they're going to team up, even though Tesla's actually suing Rivian, which is kind of funny. But uh, you also have Lordstown Motors and Lucid Motors. So they're going to band together and try to get laws passed that would allow direct sales in at least eight states with another batch of proposed legislation likely being introduced this year. And one thing that's important to note is Tesla's been fighting this for years, but they really haven't been fighting for the EV industry. They've been very smart. They'll try to get legislation passed. If that fails, they'll sue most of the time. And then what happens is a lot of times the legislature will come back and say, I'll tell you what, what if we just grandfather you in and include nobody else? And so that's what they've done. As you can see right here where it says Tesla's cooperation could also cost the company its monopoly on direct sales in some states. And that's what I'm talking about. They actually have the monopoly in some states on this. And what makes it so different here is Tesla sells vehicles through their own branded stores, similar to how Apple sells its products, and do not have franchise dealerships. The direct sales model has attracted the ire of auto dealers who benefit from long-established rules in all 50 states that prevent manufacturers with existing franchisees from opening their own dealerships to compete with them. And this legislation is being debated in Washington State, Connecticut, Nebraska, Georgia, New York, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. Now, 
what what does this got to do with Volkswagen, right? So Volkswagen is one of these companies. I did a video a few weeks ago about them and stuff, and I'll link that in for more details if you need that. Uh, them and Toyota go back and forth as the largest automobile uh, manufacturer in the world, okay? But because they have such a large infrastructure, they have been able to ramp up and sell a whole lot of electric vehicles very quickly, okay? And so now they're going to start moving into obviously in the united states and so they will absolutely capture uh, some of the market share just because of the you know exposure out there right most of us who are probably 40 or above are trained you know we've always gone to a dealership things of that nature volkswagen obviously has a big time name brand to them so they don't have to worry about marketing all that much plus they have 600 dealerships to do it with and they own a whole lot of brands under the volkswagen group name which i've gone over before many of them and so one of those actually sells, or two of those actually sells electric cars as well. And so they get credit for that too. And so, you know, it's one of those things, I wouldn't take them lightly. I know a lot of people think, oh man, well, what's the matter if they sell electric vehicles? Isn't it, a, isn't it just a one for one swap? And that's not really true. And I'll show you right here. It's because if you look at the price, and this comes off car and driver, but if you scroll down here, you can see the prices of the 2022s right here. You're looking at them anywhere from like 22,000 to 36, somewhere usually is about your range. But then when you go down and see what they're actually, their EV ID4 cost is around 41,000. So if you look at the, the rest of these right here, I mean, obviously it costs more. So it's not a one for one swap. This is about the closest I can tell that really looks just anything like their EV is 26,000. So there's a reasonably priced car, but the EV is still a more expensive product. Now, on the other hand, don't forget it costs more to produce these cars as well for all EV makers. And just to kind of make this bigger for you, you know, this is 2020 what it costs. You can see the electric vehicle costs more than a traditional vehicle by 2030 because of the battery slash engine. That price is supposed to drop dramatically, but it's still going to be about 9% more to produce an EV vehicle. So it depends on what happens to the prices, but it's not just a one for one swap. And the reason why I wouldn't underestimate Volkswagen and capturing quite a bit of market share here in the United States is because they already have 19% of electric vehicle sales in Germany, Netherlands, Norway, and six other European countries in January and February. And this just came out last month. And then if you look at what they did, even on a traditional basis, when they went to China, this is in 2017, you know, they're one of the top sellers in China for normal vehicles, but to go into China with gas guzzling vehicles and absolutely be the top dog, you know, that's where half their sales come from. And they've been smart because they take some of the other brands and they partner with Chinese companies to form these joint ventures as well, because they kind of know how it works over there. And so the fact they've done that, you know, kind of let you know when they put their mind to something, they can make it happen. And if you look, this came out as well about China and it says Tesla will have to navigate a range of challenges in 2021 if it is to maintain this position, chief of which will be the ambitious plans of Volkswagen. And so Tesla dropped their Model Y crossover prices by 30% in order to try to compete over there and then making about 10% cheaper than locally manufactured gasoline SUV models from Audi, which is owned by Volkswagen, obviously. And so Volkswagen, what they did was countered and they priced the ID4 cross electric SUV at 199,901 after subsidies and stated that the company's intention is to take market share from Tesla. This SUV was built by its local joint venture and was F with FAW GFANG Group, will have a driving range of up to 550 kilometers and allows over-the-air software updates, a popular feature in Tesla vehicles. Volkswagen's lower price points and entrenched dealership network across the hinterland cities make it a better place to win the NEV game in the long run. The German car maker is planning to launch eight ID electric models in China by 2023. Uh, Siebert, who is the managing director of JSC Automotive, predicts that Volkswagen will overtake Tesla as the top electric car brand in the country as it did in Europe in 2020. And so I want to make it very clear when you see this, I'm not personally saying they'll ever be able to overtake Tesla. Now, as far as overall sales, I believe they will for sure. But as far as how the stock price is going to do and where you're going to get more bang for your buck, there's just no way because Tesla is not just an EV company, right? It's a tech company. It's stock trades at a much higher multiple. And so that's not what I'm saying at all. 
What I am saying is, right now, you have Volkswagen, who I believe absolutely would be the number one EV seller, probably, if it isn't this year, it'll be next year for sure, just because the infrastructure has in place. And I just showed you how fast, within two years, two years now, they picked up that much market share in Europe, and we'll see in China what they're able to do. I think you're going to see, because they're very smart about how they go about it, right? With these partnerships they have in China, who do you think China's going to be you know, working more with? Volkswagen or Tesla? It's going to be Volkswagen because they, have a, they, they provide many, many more jobs than Tesla over there. Plus, they're partnering with their own companies, putting them, you know, obviously in the, in the spotlight as well. And they're just so much bigger, okay? And so in the United States, that's what they're going to have in place as well as all these dealerships. So we'll see, you know, if they're able to pick up the market share. I think they will be able to just because of exposure, okay? Now, is that going to translate into the stock price? Who knows? We shall see. I think when you start seeing this, and I said this in the other video, when they start getting treated like an actual EV company, then you'll start to see it actually move, which is why you're, you've seen it move so much lately. And what's funny about it is I actually pulled up the last six months of each one of the EV companies. And so let's look at the charts and see how they've actually performed. And so if you look at GM over the last six months, they're up 94%. Ford is up 76%. Toyota is only up 16%, so they're definitely lagging. And then if you look at Tesla, they're up 63%. Neo's up 73%. And well, then if you compare that to Volkswagen, Volkswagen's up 104% over the last six months. And what's really funny is when you look at GM, Ford, and Volkswagen during the sell off, which was back here, they actually doubled in price, they actually went up. And so obviously you can see those traditional car company stocks actually perform pretty well. Volkswagen had a good six months. Now it's consolidating, so we'll see where it goes from here. But the thing I wanted you to really get, I mean, this is not financial advice. I'm not trying to tell you to go out and buy a Volkswagen stock or anything like that. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And what I really wanted you to see is, one, why we don't have the charging infrastructure in place and why we the, the EV roll has been so slow in this country. Uh, is because of, you know, have to hire lobbyists and fight each and every state, right, to try to get the right to actually to directly sell EV cars to consumers and stuff. The other thing I wanted you to take away from this was, you know, in your opinion, you know, do you think Volkswagen is a challenger here? I think I've kind of proven they are. But what I'm really looking at is not what they do to Tesla. It's basically what is going to happen to NEO, Xping, Liado, right? Not only in China, but remember, they're trying to expand into Europe. x is already over there. Uh, Neo's talking about doing it now. And then they'll eventually, as everybody thinks, come to the United States. But when you see, you know, and this is why I'm going to be watching very closely what Volkswagen is able to do in China. Because if they can capture such a large market share on the internal combustion engine side, there's no reason they can't use all those resources and clout they have over there to move into the EV market, which of course China wants anyway. And so I'm going to be watching those numbers carefully because I want to see how it affects my investments in NEO and XPing and then what they do here in the United States, how quick they're able to capture a percentage of the EV market here, or how much they're able to capture. And I think, I think they're going to surprise people just because, you know, we discount dealerships and traditional automakers. God knows I've been guilty of it. But in this case, I don't think anybody expected Volkswagen to already take over the number one spot in Europe. And then only, I mean, already basically, I think they've sold, they sell about half as many EV cars as Tesla already. And so just imagine what that number is going to be. That's without actually competing here in the United States and China. So imagine now they're in those two markets, how that's going to be. So I can't wait to see. I'll be watching it closely. Interesting to get your opinion on it and stuff and what you think, how you think it's going to affect Neo and XPing and the smaller companies that just don't have the infrastructure like Tesla, they don't have the money like Tesla, they don't have the connections like Tesla. And so that's going to be interesting to see. So I uh, hope you got something out of this. Hit the like subscribe button if you did. If you need to open an account and start trading with, you use that link at the bottom, sign up with Weeble, and you get two free stocks. And we get a free stock here at the channel, so we appreciate all your support. And I'll end up seeing you guys tomorrow.